There's some unique challenges to, to policing in the desert. There's not too many places in the country where you have to, to police in, in an environment where the heat of the desert really affects what you do day to day. Phoenix is an incredibly diverse and unique city. Transparency is about providing information to the community so they understand what we do. Uh, they provide us the legitimacy to do our job and they only will do that if we're transparent with the community. We want the community to understand fully what we do, why we do it, and how we do things. We want to be a partner with the community because the community is where we get our authority from. So we want them to fully understand what's going on. And so we try to open up what we do, whether it's a discipline process, whether it's a CIB video, which is our critical incident briefings, which goes over events that may have occurred in our community. We want everyone to be informed and have the information up front. We decided to put the CIB videos out within 14 days because we think it's important for the uh, community to have the facts up front. Uh, there's no judgment on what we do in those CIB videos. We don't say whether what the officer did is right or wrong. We just want the, the community to have that information so they can make their own judgments on, for themselves without it being slanted one way or the other. This new era of transparency, uh, in my opinion, is a game changer. It is bridging divides between communities and law enforcement, which I'm hoping makes it a safer job for officers to do, uh, which then makes it a safer community for people to live in. Some of the scenario-based trainings that we've implemented here at the Phoenix Police Department involve working with folks who are facing mental health challenges and making sure that we address them appropriately and recognize the challenges that they're facing in those situations. CIT, or Crisis Intervention Team, um, originated out of Memphis and it's a framework based on the community policing model uh, and it's geared towards providing um, the best service possible uh, and the best access to care for people in mental health crisis. We start right with 911. Sometimes when people call 911, they don't really know what they need. Um, and so our 911 call takers, they still triage very quickly. But if it's safe, they can divert that caller right to like our 988 system, our, our statewide crisis line. So they can start getting the help that they need right away. If the situation is just too unsafe and we do need to send police, um, police can start diverting as soon as they make the scene safe. So they can request a mobile team to come to the scene, they can take the person to a facility, and we do that about 10 to 15,000 times a year. Our officers divert somebody um, back into the mental health system. And one of the key pieces of this framework is that it is truly robustly community-based. So it requires um, very active involvement from all stakeholders in the identification of problems, the creation of solutions, and then the implementing of those solutions. The Arizona model is now what SAMHSA bases its national best practices on. It is what other states are looking to. And our stakeholders, our local partners, um, are giving technical assistance across the country and in some cases across the world to people trying to emulate our model. The why is easy. We want to identify and arrest trigger pullers in our community and prevent future violence. So we know based on evidence and data that people who use a gun in the community, uh, as that continues, the uh, violence escalates. So we want to catch it early in that crime stream versus, you know, now we've had a homicide or something else. That is the goal. So obviously there's 10 detectives that were selected for this unit. So um, we have a lot of resources available to us for homicide investigations. but. Uh, with 10 detectives, you can't do it exactly as a homicide investigation, but what you can do is you can get in front of every single victim. You can put a detective in front of every single victim to talk to them to see uh, what occurred, because often that face-to-face -face interaction, you're going to get a lot more information. It's six months into the program. It started as a pilot program. We've since made it a full-time program within the department, and we're seeing signs of success. The detectives that are there are fully invested uh, into this program, and uh, they are resolving cases. I'm real proud of the, the group that are there and we're seeing certainly seeing signs of progress and it's only gonna get better as they learn additional skills and we invest more training into them. I'm, I'm very hopeful for the future as it relates to that group.
One of the first things I did when I arrived here last year was make sure that we took a look at our use of force policy. When you do an important policy like a use of force policy, we talk about the importance of involving uh, our internal stakeholders, uh, our officers and members of the department, and the community, and the Department of Justice. We got feedback from all those folks, over 800 comments, uh, as we built this best-in-class policy. I know we're headed in the right direction with it in that we are trying to make sure that the current paradigm of use of force is in line with the world we currently live in, that the tools we have available. None of this works if the community doesn't take some responsibility. Remember, Police departments respond to situations, they don't create the situation. So if we want safer communities, we need to have greater support from those communities in making sure that when crimes are committed, are we identifying people? Um, if, some, if, if you find somebody, are, we, are you allowing us to arrest them so we can take them through their due process? That the community has to be involved. The community can expect from the Phoenix Police Department, an incredibly engaged department uh, that is going to be focused on meeting the needs of the community as we go forward in the 21st century.